Good afternoon, everybody. This is Nick Goldschmidt. I'm coming to you from beautiful Healdsburg, which is where I live, and we are one hour north of the Golden Gate Bridge without traffic. And a beautiful town called Healdsburg, really unique spot because we have 280 wineries in this area, and we have four Appalachians that meet here. Alexander Valley to the north, Chalk Hill to the east, Russian River to the south, and Dry Creek, where I live, to the west. I want to thank you guys for having us here today. James, um, awesome to be uh, talking directly to your wine club, and I really appreciate the support of your staff, and Chris as well, who I understand is, is helping us out a little bit too with um, food and food pairings as well. So uh, just want to thank you, and I'm going to be sharing my screen here and running through a few videos with you. I'm sorry I can't be with you live, of course, but travel restrictions being what they are. In fact, I used to travel, um, well, up until last year, I was traveling 10 weeks a year in the US for 30 years. There's a lot of trips. And then to suddenly be home for a year was, uh, was uh, not planned. So hopefully when we do it, I are able to travel, I will be able to get out and see you personally. I also want to thank uh, Christoph as well from Pastors for helping put this together and of course the the hard-working slogger Susan McElroy who works directly with us out here in Sonoma County so special thanks to Christoph and Susan, Susan as well. The two wines we're going to be talking about today are of course from New Zealand which is great because I don't get to talk about these wines too often Boulder Bank and Forefathers. This morning actually I was out driving a tractor this is not the vineyard I was driving, but uh, this is my front yard. And today I, um, I do that as, along with making wine and, and consulting. Plus I have seven patents uh, in an in invent, invention mode. I am originally from New Zealand. I have two degrees from New Zealand. And then I went to Australia to train in another two degrees, that, but more specifically in viticulture, which is grape growing and enology, which is winemaking. Today, I live in Napa, Sonoma, and I've lived here since 1989, so over 30 years now. Yeah, 32. So, um, yeah, I was a corporate winemaker for a lot of those years, for 24 of those years. Um, firstly, with LVMH, because I was a winemaker at CME, and LVMH owned CME, and I was lucky enough that they put me in charge of still wine for the world for LVMH because they owned a few still wine wineries and then we got sold to Constellation. So looked after Icon Estates, which was a small subsidiary at the time. Left Simi in 2003 and went to Allo de Mac, the world's largest wine company. Clay de Bois, William Hill, like this peak, Gary Farrell, Mum, Bonavista, Campo Viejo, Marcus Dierenzo. Anyway, they owned 58 wineries in seven countries. So I got to travel around a lot and then we got bought by Jim Beam and then we got bought by Constellation. So in 2008, I went out on my own. And so today, I've gone backwards. I'm driving tractors, which is what I love, which is my passion, really. Uh, yeah, I am from New Zealand. And the way to distinguish between New Zealand and Australia is, of course, Australia has white stars on the flag. We have red stars and we only need four. We don't need six because they have six because they have the two pointer stars as if anybody wants to know where Australia is. These are my uh, COVID kids, my five children. The four of them lived with us during COVID, except Catherine. She... Uh, she was living down in Petaluma, about 20 minutes away from us. Uh, this boy is doing atmospheric science. Uh, this girl is doing a PhD in biology. This girl is doing um, environmental engineering. And he's a winemaker in majored in chemistry. Uh, New Zealand is a, we call it Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud. I'm from Mangafai, which is up here where that dot is, it says Northland. So this is about three hours, believe it or not because the roads are very twisty, but I went to school in Auckland. Uh, the vineyards that we own are down here in Marlborough. So Nelson and Marlborough, there's a mountain range in between. This is called the, the Southern Alps. These Alps are bigger than Switzerland and Austria put together, believe it or not. And um, this, this strait here, Cook Strait, is one of the windiest places in the world. So taking an airplane is very interesting. And I fly very specifically to get there. We made up of three valleys, the Wairau Valley, the Awateri Valley and Ward. We don't care about Ward because there's no water down there. The Awateri Valley flows into Clifford Bay. The Wairau River flows into Cloudy Bay. These are what we call the Wither Hills and the Richmond Range. So it's a really unique place because it's completely sheltered from both wind and rain. And that's why Marlborough is so unique. It's a long way south, so we get long daylight hours and we don't get the rain and the wind. So the... the um, 
winds are protected by these by these Alps, uh, by the Wither Hills. But the other unique thing about the hills is from these came what we call the glaciers, and they form the glacial valleys, which is what is now called the Brancot, and then the river soils are what we call the Rapara. <coughs> Excuse me. The first vineyard we're going to talk about is Boulder Bank. This is, um, it's very easy to get around Blenheim. There's four roads. There's New Renwick Road, Middle Renwick Road, Old Renwick Road, and Rapara Road. So we're on Rapara Road, which is closest to the Wairau River. And uh, as you come up Jackson's Road, which is probably the most important road in, or most famous road in Blenheim, you'll go past Alan Scott on the left, Clowley Bay on the right, Paratai, which is um, Matua's top vineyard, you know, the, the label that has the um, the whale uh, tail on it. And then you get to Stonely, which is probably the most famous uh, vineyard in the area. And then uh, we are right here. And this is the property that we're talking about. This is our vineyard. This is a hotel, believe it or not. Uh, I don't know why our vineyard comes out green. Maybe um, I'd seeded it before the others. I'm not so sure. Uh, Fitzroy is the name of the vineyard, which is named for my uncle. And we machine harvest everything down there. Firstly, the vineyards are set up to be machine harvested. You can see how green the grass is. So even though this is harvest time, we still have enough rainfall to have the grass be green, which is crazy. Well, you certainly wouldn't see that here in California. The second thing is we don't have, uh, so botrytis is a big issue. So we train the vines to be vertical and we have good exposure so we don't get the botrytis growing in them. And then secondly, we don't have the labor to actually do the handwork because a lot of the handwork is done by um, people. They bring on plane loads of people from Southern Asia for the, for the um, season. So the labor is not that freely available. So machine harvesting is ideal. And then thirdly, we can pick on time because, you know, if we see rain coming or uh, heat coming or whatever, we can actually run out there with a machine and pick everything very quickly. That's the Richmond range in the background, just FYI. The, this is unusual to be showing you this photo because fourthly, we pick the, the grapes in the middle of the night. So this is unusual. This is uh, 5 a.m. in the morning that we were loading this truck and the winery is only about 10 minutes away, so very close. Here we are at the Fitzroy Vineyard, just driving down the uh, road. This is the way we do it in New Zealand. We make our roads just wide enough for our rental cars to fit down. You can see we're not quite ready yet. A little bit of time to go. We've still got the waxy outside to the Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, so we're close to Verizon, but not yet. Anyway, another gorgeous day in Marlborough, driving down the rows. You'll notice the uh, there's no Fitzroy wheat Vineyard, there. You see the weeds uh, under the vine, meaning that we don't herbicide there, which is great. So key elements, uh, I talked about the harvesting, but obviously there are other factors, including the age of the vine being over 30 years old, which is great. The water holding capacity is awesome, meaning that the soil holds just enough water to gradually release the, um, the water to the vine. Uh, the orientation is just off north-south, in fact, 15 degrees off, um, which is opposite to what we do in the northern hemispheres, because of course the sun, the equator is in the middle. I don't want to get into that. Uh, the other element is that we, we're very good on shoot position because we really want the canopy to be vertical and so we want to have a light, a lot of light and um, wind be able to pass through. The wine itself, so on the label you'll notice the, um, the flax, so the Maori who are our uh, indigenous um, person, the, um, they use flax, it was their main um, garment and, and people look at this, they'll know that I'm from the North Island because the flax up there is very thin. The stones, of course, come from the vineyard and Fitzroy is the name of, name of my uncle, as I said. The style of this wine is that uh, when I was making wine in Portugal, you know, the, the reason why Portuguese people are really skinny is because the food is really hard to eat. So you need about three of these barnacles and it's 110 degrees and you're drinking port and you're outside. And so uh, I said to the, the lady that was there, I said, Ma'am, do you mind if I have a glass of white wine? This is 1992, remember? I didn't know much back then. And um, the lady comes out and goes, yeah, yeah, I'll take care of it. She brings me out a white wine and it's filled up to here. The condensation's pouring off it because 110 degrees and I'm eating barnacles. And I get the wine and go, and the whole roof of my mouth gone. You know, 
all the enamel on my teeth is gone, the roof of my mouth is gone. I'm like, what the heck was that? Well, I didn't know what Vino Verde was, but that's the sensation I tried to get in this wine. Like, am I hungry? Am I thirsty? So that's the style that I'm after. And obviously, great wine is meant to be drunk with food. The second thing that's important is that these are only made for US consumers, customers. I don't make this for uh, New Zealanders because New Zealanders want to have a little bit more green grassy. And I find that the US consumer doesn't really want to have it be too grassy. So we tone that down a bit. We add a little bit more flesh. And I do that by leaving, when I press the wine, when I press the grapes, there's a little bit of pulp and stuff that goes through into the tank and it sits in the bottom. We'll leave it there for 10 days and through that I get flavor. So I'm not talking about wine leaves here. I'm talking about juice leaves and I find it really interesting. And the British as well, they want to have much more green bean asparagusy characteristic. And we're not really hot on that because we eat Mediterranean food. Look what the British eat. G'day, I'm Nick Goldschmidt. I'm the winemaker for Forefather Sauvignon Blanc here in the Marlborough region in New Zealand. And we're standing out here prior to the 2018 vintage. And what's unique about this vineyard is we have much more water holder capacity here than a lot of other vineyards in Marlborough. We don't have a lot of stone, we have more soil, which means that we don't get as much dehydration, we don't have to irrigate as much, and hence we have a much darker, greener canopy. That also means we can push the, the ripeness a little bit further so we get more texture, more weight, more flesh, which is much more interesting for the US palate. A little fuller and richer so the wine comes in the mouth kind of like this and has this textural element not too green not too grassy but a little bit more passion fruit today we're out here we're um, we're still about 10 days to two weeks away from Verazon the berries are still pretty solid and uh, we've got a little way to go yet and we expect to be harvesting here in about two months probably but anyway looks like a great vintage we've got beautiful blue skies we're out here in beautiful Marlborough Anyway, 2018, Forefathers Sauvignon Blanc, Waxi Vineyard. Yeah, I wanted to um, just jump into that because I wanted to decide to show you that there is a different flavor profile between the two. So the Boulder Bank will come in here. It has a little bit of texture right on the finish, but basically it's a little bit tighter and a little bit more zippy than the Waxi. So the Forefathers, and this is a bottle of the Forefathers, when... Um, I was working for uh, LVMH, you know, I got sent to Cloudy Bay. Why, I mean, why am I going to Cloudy Bay to make Cabernet, Chardonnay, Merlot, Sauvignon Blanc? When you think Sauvignon Blanc, best places in the world, obviously, is Marlborough. McLaren Vale for Shiraz in Australia, Uco Valley for Malbec in Argentina, and Cabernet for California. So these are before layer cake, cupcake, and all the other cakes. But this is pure single vineyard, one vineyard, one vintage, one variety, and all vegan. So these are legit. The other thing you'll notice on the back of them is we have the registration for sustainability and we have it on both the wines. The sustainability is a big deal for us because New Zealand was the first country in the world to put sustainability on the map. Chile was second and Sonoma County was third. Believe it or not, Napa Valley hasn't even done sustainability yet. But um, going back to the label, so on the label, we call it forefathers or meaning the forefather appellation or the best appellation for that variety in the new world. This is a pair of boots that I used to wear when I walked around Simi Vineyards. This is my constitution that you can't quite read, faded out. It's about sustainability, fish-friendly farming, organics, and biodynamics. And then I stole John Hancock's signature from the U.S. constitution and changed it to my own. And then Waxi is the name of the bird that eats all the grapes. And uh, they fly in a flock of two or 3,000. And so the joke is, of course, in New Zealand, you go out and you shoot. If you don't kill at least seven in a, in a shot, it was a bad shot because those things fly for 30, they feed for 30 miles and they fly, you know, they turn the sky black. It's crazy. But when I get the wine and I'm drinking the Forefathers right now, the 2020. Man, it just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You know, I want to go back and have a second glass, but, or I want to eat something, you know, like a cheese or, a, well, my favorite thing is asparagus with a bit of prosciutto with a touch of lemon on it. Man, I could eat those things all day. Oysters, of course, is a no brainer, but I like something a little bit, that, that for me, oysters is better with Boulder Bank. I prefer scallops or something a little bit fuller and fleshier with the forefathers, a little bit more skinsy reaction. So um, let's jump back on here. So the forefathers is a little bit fuller, 
and richer than what the Boulder Bank is. And this description is on the 19. I was just saying I've got the 20 in front of me. But um, we have some fans out there, so the press has been pretty good. The uh, again, same same situation, which I won't go into, but <clears throat> making sure the canopies are nice and open and full on, and so we can get to ripeness. Uh, if you want to come visit us, we would love to host you. We are out in Dry Creek. We opened on March first, twenty twenty. Perfect time to do that. Uh, and you can contact us at 431-8277 in the 707 area code. We share the, um, the vineyards, the, the, the operation with um, another couple of places, but it's really cool to come visit because you can um, uh, visit like six wineries without, you know, around the parking lot. So there's a whole bunch of different wineries that, um, that, that are there. So it's a very good place to come visit. Uh, if you want to follow us, the best place to follow us is Goldschmidt underscore vineyards on Instagram, which drops into Facebook. Again, Goldschmidt vineyards on Facebook. But if you want to see some of the fun videos that we do and log on to the vineyards, etc., I've got over um, uh, 400 videos up there right now on YouTube. I don't do much on Twitter, but Instagram and Facebook for sure. And uh, YouTube is where, where all the videos end up. Uh, and of course, if you don't support us, I'm going to send these crazy guys out to uh, <laughs> to really mess with you and drink all your cellar and uh, etc. So thank you for uh, supporting the wine club. And I know that you can pre-buy both of these wines at a really special price. So I hope you take advantage of that this evening. And again, I really want to thank James and uh, his team for hosting us and allowing us to present to you all this evening. So I'm going to stop sharing right now. And um, just a couple of other things I want to point out about the, the wines is they are both screw cap. Now, screw cap is people say that cork is a natural product. Well, you know, I don't know when you last saw a white tree because all the corks are white. And uh, so this is this is a great way to store wine. If you do open these, when you do open these, I should have, somebody just took the bowl of bang. But when you look at the bottom uh, seal, you can either see them being white or shiny. If they're white, it means they're Cyrenex, which allows a small amount of oxygen to pass through to the wine. If it's shiny, it means it's tin, which means it's, it's an absolute seal. And uh, so that's sort of the way that I like to do it. I like to make sure that our wines are really fresh and, and, as, and as close to the way that we made them when you get a chance to drink them. Anyway, so I really appreciate your time and energy uh, and thanks again. And um, I'm just gonna stop recording and uh, pass it over to you guys.